They get an asshole like, fine, I'm Metal Sonic, uh. dickheads. Welcome to another uh, episode of Muddled Dice. I'm Daniel. Hi, um, everyone. This is Abby. Oh, hello, everyone. This is Sean. Hi, I'm Cole. <laughs> back again. Cole is back again, and so are Sean and Abby. Tyke is out this week, because I guess he's got better things to do. His kid is um, sick. Like a child. His kid is sick. Yeah. Is that why he's... I thought he was at, like, something for... So he Rob. was he was gonna be at the thing, but oh, then okay. his kid got sick, and so he oh, didn't... Yeah. yeah. I guess that's a good thing to do. How that's a fair Take care of your kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, shit. Okay, so E3 mm-hmm. was this past week. I think, is it still going? Could we record I think it goes the, into the weekend. The convention is going yeah. right now. Okay, yeah. but mm-hmm. like all like the shows and presentations are pretty much over. Past what's actually going to be like in the, the convention, like, which is like, yeah. yeah. The big things. It's, it's like winding down. Yeah. So, um, I've been watching it all week. Okay, okay. Have been. Um, <laughs> I thought it was a good show. I mean, there's a lot of stuff yeah. I was interested in. Some people I've read on the internet are like, oh, it's a slow week E3 this year, but I didn't... I mean, what do you guys think? They always say it's a slow E3, <laughs> especially with, like, the Nintendo one, just because that's yeah. the one I follow the most. It's always, mm. oh, Nintendo sucked at E3 this year, yeah. but then, like, the last 15 seconds will happen, and they'll be like, well, Nintendo won E3, and that's <laughs> always what happens, so... I've learned every time I see someone complaining about a game or like a company during E3 to kind of just stop. Yeah. And Take it with the greatest yeah. 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 I feel like part of it is also, and maybe I just didn't really pay as much attention in the previous years, but like the the big kind of presentations it seemed were more spaced out than they normally were. So okay. I think it allowed some of the hype to kind of dissipate before it could like really build up on itself. Oh, okay. Um, because like the Microsoft one was what like last weekend, yeah. so, yeah, so it, it felt very like Saturday or yeah, Friday. yeah. It felt very detached from the rest of E3. Like yeah. they were still good presentations, but they didn't feel like oh, I'm watching an E3 presentation. Right. Well, and there was nothing from Sony this year. Yeah. Sony's just like, no, we're bowing out. So like that's that's hmm. a big company to just be like, no, we're not doing anything. Yeah. Hmm. Especially like now that you know Xbox is like, hey, check out the yeah. sneak peek of our new console, and Scarlet. Sony's just like crickets like yeah. in the distance. Yeah. I'm convinced that Sony will have some sort of, like, their own conference shortly and be like, hey, like, here's our brand new console. It's going to ship for 150 bucks cheaper than the Scarlet, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did did, did Microsoft give a price for the Scarlet? No, but I just remember when the current gen consoles came out. I was in, I was, like, at the start of high school, and I just remember how pissed everyone was, because... The Xbox was marginally better spec wise, but mm-hmm. was like 150 bucks more expensive still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and despite like, that, no sense. Yeah, despite that, ironically, like it seems like the Xbox One is probably like performance wise, people appreciate the PS4 more, you know, yeah. despite the fact that it's kind of weaker specs. So yeah, well, I think part of that is the PS4 has a lot more exclusives. Like, yeah. Almost anything you can get on Xbox, you can get for Windows too. Yeah. yeah. So people are like, which uh, I'm super glad they've started that trend because I think they kind of yeah. realized like halfway through the Xbox One life cycle that they didn't have the same kind of uh, exclusives. They had Halo, yeah. and Halo didn't do well on yeah. this on this gen. So yeah. I'm happy that they decided to go like, hey, we own Windows. Why don't we just make it exclusive for PC too? Yeah. Because then that means whenever a good exclusive does come out, I can play it too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, any particular games or any or announcements you guys thought were interesting? I mean, I okay. Let me start over. So, Cyberpunk. I think mm. that was probably the biggest thing. Yeah, one I think of the it's things at E3 this yeah, year. Probably yeah. the yeah. biggest. Finally, yeah, <laughs> has a release date, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And it has Keanu Reeves too. Yeah, which yeah, it's interesting. I don't know his involvement fully. He I, seems like a pretty like important character. I just like read it. on Twitter just now that uh-huh. he has the second most audio time in the game. Did, did they say it's all like of 50, his, fifteen days of audio? Recording? Yeah, oh, all, of, all of his yeah. lines are the second most, aside from what I assume to be the main character. Nice. Mm. So I'm kind of hoping he's either. In the trailer, it looked like he uh, kind of flickered in and out like a hologram. So I'm kind of mm-hmm. hoping that, that he's like your mm. like companion. He's like game. your Obi Wan. Yeah, the yeah. Game. Like Cortana. He's, he's yeah. like your Navi, yeah. or like <laughs> or like your Claptrap or he's, something. He's your mystical yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. That'd be mm. really really fun. I, yeah. I think it's always a kind of cool idea when they get a celebrity just to do voice lines and mm-hmm. act yeah. out in a more like storytelling sense than 
gameplay as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just think it works out really well when you can have a companion that has that kind of talent behind them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if that's how he ends up getting utilized, I think I'll be really, really happy with it. I've uh, I've always been kind of against the whole concept, especially in those like hyper realistic games of them bringing like real live actors into them. Yep. For me, it just feels kind of like like a little lazy because it's like you're not really designing like yeah you're writing a character but you're not really like designing them visually mm -hmm. that and it's like if I wanted to see this person I would go watch a movie like I'm not no, kind of fair. playing this game to play like play with XYZ mm -hmm. um, but if I'm honest and it's probably a little biased because I just think Keanu Reeves is amazing when I saw him I was like <laughs> yes I guess also probably because, like, despite the fact that he's in the game, you're still your own character. Whereas in a lot of those other games where, like, an actor or actress is, is very heavily in it, like, you're playing the, that the actor, actor or actress. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, hang on one second. I gotta stop this. Okay, back into it. Um, yeah, so Cyberpunk 20, I almost said 2020, 2077. <laughs> what, what did they say what the release date was? Sometime in, is it, was it in March? I think so, yeah. Or am I confusing that with Final Fantasy VII? No, I feel I feel like it was sometime in March. Okay. Uh, so yeah, and kind of seemingly maybe along the same lines, the Ghostwire Tokyo. Mm -hmm. I thought that looked pretty cool. Yeah. That was the like survival horror game from the people that did. Uh, I didn't see actually any actual gameplay, so I don't even no, know what to expect. But it looks interesting. I mean, it's from like the guy who did Resident Evil and the Evil Within and all that, mm -hmm. and I thought it looked really interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited for that. Um, one of my like favorite game series was always, and now that I'm trying to talk about, it, I can't remember. But the 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 one that you're like, um, you have like a camera and you have to take Ooh, pictures. Fatal Frame. Fatal Frame. Yeah, Fatal I Frame has Fatal always Frame. been like a really big like favorite game for me. Yeah. Obviously, this is kind of conceptually a little different, but like if, even if it borrows any of those kind of nuances or, or like themes, I think it'll be really cool. So. Yeah. So okay, moving right along. Uh, Rage 2 announced... Like, Rage 2 is already out, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Announced... I didn't get into Rage that much. So. I didn't like the original <laughs> game either. Yeah. It... I ain't never played it. I was, it's I one was... of those games that, like, comes at you like it's going to be open world, but then it's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like, ah, you got yeah. me. I was, My money. <laughs> yeah, I was really into, like, the concept of it um, and, like, the theme, and then, like, it came out and it kind of just... Like, it wasn't it... really anything... Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. and it felt like a lot like um so it would, it, like Borderlands came out around the same time, didn't it? Yeah, so it I felt think so. a lot like we're Borderlands but edgier? Yeah. Uh, oh. Is that the pizza already? Oh, oh. We ordered pizza and it's way more important than this podcast. Yeah. So we got to get that right away. <laughs> This reminds me of the um, like the little chocolate mints that they give you at Olive Garden. <laughs> the best really part of Olive Garden. You're right? <laughs> it's making me think of uh, that thing that Skywalker drinks in the last Star Wars oh, movie. Oh, no. Oh, the, the Please, alien no. Milk. Please, no. Please, <laughs> no. Like, is that body too? Every oh, time God. I see that drink, it reminds me of Silly Putty. Like, uh. the one I drank mm -hmm. that I was just telling you about had, yeah. like, the consistency of, like, not quite liquid, not quite like yeah. a gelatin. It was a little viscous, just a it little was bit. Like, it was just slightly more solid than liquid, and uh -huh. I was like, not comfortable with that. Oh no! Well, I lied. It that was, was not, not pizza. The pizza. I was a door-to-door -door pesticide salesman. Oh, really? oh. yeah. Oh, so, that reminds me. I have two very nice Mormon kids to coming to my house this <laughs> weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had something oh. to do that to me. It came out of nowhere. He's like, I'm in the neighborhood. Yeah, so I can give you these sweet me. deals. That, yeah, he's like, I'm helping your neighbor and your other neighbor. I'm like, I wish cool, I could have seen him. I'm really busy that right same now. guy. Yeah. You like in like a super tight bro muscle shirt? I don't know. I didn't it's talk to him fine. myself. Okay. Well, you live in a totally different part of town. That'd be weird know, if it was the same I know, guy. So I was wondering You're because it's the same thing like, from like last week. Yeah. And I was like, please stop talking to him. This is a scam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're telling him all I'm this information. helping your neighbor. No, you're not. Yeah. My neighbor's not home. Yeah, I know. Uh, we were on Rage. Rage, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, to me, Rage just felt like Borderlands, but like we're a little edgier. Yeah, because we I mean, got the like graphics we're, from were really good. Yeah. Oh yeah, but mm. yeah, but um, <laughs> I thought the interesting thing from about Rage Two was they're coming out with cheat codes. Okay. But like not not like cheat codes that help you win, but like big head mode and like uh, ultra get uh, mode. Okay. So just fun little, little yeah, fun yeah which I thought was interesting because I don't. 
think I've seen things like that in games in a long time. Like, not agree, since, like, yeah. PS2 days, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Past, I like, the modding community, like, forever. modding things for yeah. PC games. Yeah, but not, like, not the thing... They said cheat codes, so I'm yeah. hoping it's things like go to the start menu and hit, like, up, 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 triangle, yeah. start, select, X. Yeah. And then it's, like, big head mode, and not just, like you said, like, download this mod for three bucks. Yeah. Uh, but... Because I remember cheat codes, like... That was oh, the only way I beat a lot of games when I was a kid. <laughs> like, I can't get past this level. Like, go to, like, cheatcc.com and mm -hmm. grab the, like, god mode code. I remember yeah. being, like, too stupid to remember that the internet exists. <laughs> and so every time the Scholastic Book Fair would come around my school, I'd go and grab that, like, cheat codes yes. 2003 or whatever oh, booklets. Yeah. And I would just, like, really quickly read through as much yeah. of it as I could for the games I played. And, yeah. like, write down on a piece of scrap paper what the cheat codes were. Was, um... Because you guys, Cole and Abby, are younger than me and Sean. Mm -hmm. Was Tips and Tricks magazine still around when you guys were no. younger? Mm -hmm. No. Nah, I wouldn't Do you remember know. that, Sean? It sounds familiar. Who made it? Who, who made it? Or did, was like it just its own it? thing? It was its own thing, yeah. It was, it was mm -hmm. literally I like... I kind of remember it. A list of like cheat codes. Was and it like, like a kind of a... <clears throat> it's not really a book size, but it had some thickness to it about yay big. No, it was like a monthly magazine. Oh. That would come, and you could go to like... Bonds or and like buy it off the rack and it had like it had like the back half was like a bunch of cheat codes and then the front half was like little like one or two page guides for like fighting games like here's how to get mm -hmm. here's I mean, how to use Luke Kang here's how to get past this area in Spyro part. yeah mm. I, I never think, bought any of those things I would I just read them in the store and take home <laughs> oh, yeah, what I needed that, you know? yeah. 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 yeah write it down on a piece of paper yeah. write it on your hand <laughs> yeah I mean maybe it was a giant map for Metroid or something you gotta do what yeah. you gotta do <laughs> yeah I remember there were special like special <laughs> editions of tips and tricks that would be like something like Metroid or like Medieval had come out last month and like we've this issue there's a huge map of all the levels in the game or something you know mm -hmm. two dollars extra yeah. come in like a plastic bag yeah <laughs> uh yeah. The good old days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Although most of the games that were like out by the by the time like I seriously got into video games like didn't have cheat codes anymore. So I think I think the last yeah. time I used a cheat code and I think it was on an N sixty four, but I'm not sure. It was yeah. like it was like a cartridge that had a bunch of Disney games on it, and I used it on the Disney games because they were hard as shit. <laughs> like, I don't even remember what it was, but, like, my uh, my grandpa had it, and when we would, my mom, like, would work during the day, mm. so she would, like, drop us off at his house, and then he would take us to school, so that in that, like, window before we went to school, we would play video games on it, and it had, like, The Lion King and Aladdin and, like, a bunch of other stuff, but the games were hard as shit, mm. and I think that was, like, the last time I used cheat were codes. They I don't know what they were like. They because yeah. there was an Aladdin and the Lion King game for the Genesis. It might, yeah, it might were, have been on the lower Genesis. systems. I remember those. I mean, I, if it, they got them all together at one place, it makes yeah. me think ports. It, yeah, it, it probably was a port, or it might have been the Genesis. I was young enough at the time that I could be wrong that it was an N sixty four. Like oh. all I remember is that it was like one of those really honking cartridges that you like plugged in. So <laughs> I would guess sixty four. Yeah. Probably by the time the 64 came out, you could probably fit two or three Genesis games on one cartridge. Mm -hmm. But I feel it's also kind of appropriate that a game from id is the one that's going to be bringing back those kind of cheat codes, if they are those kind. Just oh, kind of like from id? Well, yeah, Rage is from id software. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I remember their codes, ID Behold. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I still remember. <laughs> yep, yep, Doom. Uh, well, shit, we'll go to another game that started from it, Wolfenstein. Mm -hmm. They've got a VR mode coming out and yeah. a co-op mode. I'm super excited for the VR mode. I haven't really played any... I mean, I know they have good uh, fire in their last uh, their last release. Right, yeah. yeah. I've never played one. I didn't really... So Okay, so for <clears throat> me, like, everyone loved the new Colossus. Uh-huh. But, like, I it was it not... I did not like it. Because well, right. I only played through like the first level, and okay. I feel like it's a really shitty way to introduce a game. Because in the first, you start off like bound to a wheelchair with super awkward controls, and you're yeah. just like fumbling your way through these tight levels. And it's like, why would you make me have not fun in the first like 20 minutes of yeah. a game that's supposed to be just like run and gun kill Nazis? Mm. So having gone through the rest of the game, I think okay. it's very much to put you in that mindset of like defeat before you kind of like okay. get that opportunity. And in, in a way, it almost makes that like run and gun shooting Nazis like all the more sweeter because oh, you've kind okay. of sat through that really frustrating section. Okay. The like the story of Wolfenstein, like <laughs> someone remind me what someone yeah. remind me what happened at the end of the New Order. I 
feel like I just played it a couple months ago, but I don't uh, remember what happened at the very know. end. I didn't play that one. Ah, uh, New Order. God. Maybe that's why the New Colossus was so jarring. Maybe. Didn't, you didn't play the first you... one. Yeah. I mean, like, I played the very first one. Oh, yeah. I honestly, <laughs> like, in 1992. like... Yeah, I honestly can't remember either. Like, what happens at the end like, is what ends I up knew, in the... I knew you went... Like, you got hit by shrapnel. Yeah. You went brain dead. You, like, lost 10 years or 15 years. Yeah. Okay. And then the rest of the story progressed. And I know... And you, like, met up with the rebellion. Mm -hmm. I think at the end you, like, busted down the dam or, like, the big base they had. Yeah, so that's that's what... So, and I think at the and end it's like, actually a cliffhanger. Yeah, you, and like, they, hurt yourself. Yeah, you play oh, okay, it out okay, in okay. the new one where it's like, oh, you didn't actually win that fight. And oh, then you go into, okay. like, that's the wheelchair scenes. I remember the boss fight being actually, like, for a first-person shooter boss. Yeah. Which I'm not usually a fan of first-person shooter bosses. Like, I like the story modes, Mm -hmm. But not like boss battles are always just you know like shoot them in yeah. a yeah. special area or just in general. Or they're yeah. just a bullet sponge. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. like this one, I remember being pretty cool because it had phases and the environment changed a little bit. Okay. So it was a lot, and you had to actually like get up and do something other than just shooting them. So it was much more interactive and interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. But now I kind of like you like almost kill yourself to beat this guy. And, it says. Yeah. So Wikipedia says, uh, Blaskowitz repeatedly stabs Death's Head, who pulls out a grenade, which explodes, killing Death's Head and mauling Blaskowitz. As a gravely wounded Blaskowitz crawls towards a window, he mentally recites the new Colossus as he watches the resistance survivors boarding a helicopter. Mm -hmm. Oh, Seeing yeah. Seeing that I they've reached me. safely and bleeding heavily for, <clears throat> excuse me, bleeding heavily from his injuries, Blaskowitz orders the resistance to fire the nuclear cannon. Yeah. After the cre after the credits, a helicopter is heard approaching. Okay, so at the end of New Order, his fate is kind of like, yeah, we don't know. And then he's in a wheelchair at the beginning of New Colossus. Yeah. Okay. okay. That makes more sense now. <clears throat> the story of Wolfenstein, like, <laughs> fiction is such an amazing thing. Right. But, like, you wouldn't expect it to go where Wolfenstein goes, especially in the New Colossus. Like, I, I sat there for that game, and you get to a point in it, and you're just like... This is what we're doing now. This is where the game is going. Examples, um, please. Is it? Can no. I spoil it on? Like, because it's technically a spoiler. I, I don't uh, know. If... The game's been out for like like, three yeah. years, like okay, I think. so okay. from this spoiler, point, like spoiler alert for like the next two minutes. Yeah, you Blaskowitz gets his head cut off. Wow. Like he's dead, and then they sew his head on another body, and he's just okay now. Oh, okay. Wow. So it just like. like Jump! It completely jumps realism from the first one. Is yeah. like okay. you can follow it yeah, more it's or like, less. So you're like, okay, this literally, could yeah. like gets his head cut off, and you're like, this is like <laughs> what, like an hour into the game, what the fuck am I supposed to do now? And then you like wake up, and his head's been put on another person's body, and it's like, okay, wow. <laughs> like, like All this right is then. this is cool, I guess. But like you said, like the first one kind of like vaguely follows kind of a historical. Something like it's it's within with, reason, like, yeah, with in, in a way, and, yeah. 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 But then you're like, oh, so we're just gonna he can survive getting his head cut off now, yeah. that's cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I guess, like, if probably it, because it is so kind of entangled with like actual history, is why yeah. that turn is so surprising. Because, yeah. like, in, in any other like fantastical game, you'd just be like. Yeah, this is sure. This yeah. is fine, but like yeah. this one is like Nazi Germany. Oh, we're it, doing this like it, like, it presents yeah. itself as like an alternate history where it's like yeah. oh, they won because they had. I know from the original game, there's kind of like a supernatural aspect to it, yeah. but in the yeah. in the first reboot game, it's kind of downplayed. It's like okay, they had I was gonna some ask which one sort of played. yeah, they yeah. had some sort of benefit that made their technology better. So it was like just a tiny push okay. they needed to win World War Two, yeah. and the rest of it is like here's what happens if they had won World War Two. Like America is run by Nazis, and right, yeah. and then it, it like grounds itself in reality. But okay, I'm kind of excited to play the second one if they're like nope we're past that yeah. they're just out it's out the window <laughs> reality is out the window hmm. it's kind of interesting because i remember the first one was fairly like i mean like i'm talking about like the very first one yeah was <clears throat> i think pretty grounded in reality mm -hmm. like until you got to like the last few levels when you were fighting like robot hitler yeah and stuff yeah. like that and it kind of sounds like it's 
kind of being like flipped. Yeah. They're you know, like we're in full force now with the uh, robot Hitler and I feel like and I and I'm gonna use stuff. a yeah, I'm gonna use the movie as an example. I feel like when things are remade now, things are changed because they can get away with it more because of what people are like used to slash okay. desensitized to. The best example I can think of is so the original um what is it? Friday the 13th, the Freddy films. Yeah. The original narrative was that he came back to kill these people because the kids lied. Right. And, you know, they killed him anyway. In the remake, uh, yeah. the kids didn't lie. He, he, you know, so like, but they could get away with it because that's like not something that's, it's, it's bad, but it's yeah. like not taboo to portray in media anymore. Right. And so I feel like with, with Wolfenstein, it's like, well, people are more used to these video games that have like you know robots and stuff and then there's also that kind of whole idea of people getting kind of tired of those like very like like intertwined with history and close to history like yeah. war games kind of thing yeah. and so they probably felt like it would be like more of a seller if it was like further away from like reality yeah yeah well, there's probably also a little bit of like spectacle creep yeah like oh we did realism last time like how are we going to make it even more spectacular this time mm -hmm. let's add giant robots yeah let's add crazy medically impossible things yeah 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 uh okay i know i wanted to talk about death loop but i can't remember what it was <laughs> i don't so know I'm what gonna... you would say it just looks cool it does look cool i don't know what death loop is I mean, loop the Watchdogs game. Oh, cool. I want to talk about it because it's from the guys who did Dishonored. Uh, it's Arcane, ah. I think, right? It was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I love Dishonored. Dishonored has a, an amazing art style. Yeah. It's like... Uh, yeah, let me see. I can't remember. What was the three-player co-op game? Three-player co-op? Yeah. Uh, Gears of War. Yeah, like it's Gears? a Gears of War oh. game. Yeah, it's it's like a it's like a play. <laughs> I can't I think because I wouldn't be excited about that. No, I think it. So I don't even think it's technically the game. I think it's like a play mode within five. It's I don't like think a it's a standalone. Like, it's like a Left 4 Dead story mode kind yeah. of deal, mm, but okay. with three players. Mm, okay. Okay, that's right. Because Death Better. Loop is like you die, but then you can come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's their like, whole thing. It's like thing. that one again. Tom Cruise movie. They die and you yeah. immediately see And yeah, also that die. other game that's that right. just came out. What's it called? Uh, oh, geez. Uh, I'll find it out. out. I'll find it. It came out at the beginning of this year. Hmm. It's the silence that will be cut I know, out. right? Yeah. <laughs> uh... But the Watch Dogs game looked cool. I like that Watch one. Watch Dogs looks cool. I, I'll just play the grandma if I can all day long. <laughs> Helen is amazing. Yeah, I have a note that just says Helen is wonderful. It's good. I love it's that. It's good. Yeah. <clears throat> and I like the idea of, like, you can... So when they first announced it, they said, like, you can play as any NPC. And people are like, so do you hack other people? Yeah. But I guess you're just, like, recruiting them to your cause. And then when okay. you die... You can like move into another character as opposed to just like respawning kind of thing. Yeah, because okay. they showed in the presentation mm -hmm. you were playing one character mm -hmm. and he died, and like a screen came up and it's like permadeath, but then it like respawned the player into mm -hmm. Helen. Okay. And so I, I guess maybe you can lose followers permanently, uh -huh. but then just move on to another follower who might have different skill sets. Okay. Yeah, it seems really interesting, mm -hmm. and they're supposed to all also have like all fully voiced and animated. Which is like lot of That's, work. That seems like a lot of work. That'll be interesting to see. Like, um, there's this one game that I have on on the Switch, and I can't remember what it's called right now, but, like, its whole selling point is it's very similar to, like, the Persona games. Oh, okay. Um, but the whole concept is, like, um, like, there are over, like, a thousand P NPCs, and you can, like, yeah. talk to all of them. But, like, after probably the tenth one, you're like, I heard this before. <laughs> yeah. Like it's like they, procedurally <laughs> just tossing voice lines or uh, text lines on. Yeah. And, yeah, that's frustrating. So yeah. that'll be interesting to see if that's something. Well, do you guys remember Sui Coden? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first one had like uh, it's like two hundred no one hundred twenty eight different like characters you could meet and recruit yeah. to your like hmm. battle system. Mm -hmm. and, uh, like to journey with you and your party. Yeah. Okay. And, like at the time, because it came out for the PlayStation One, like 128 unique characters. Is a, is a shit ton. Was a shit ton with yeah. like all different names and like different mini quests. And it wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna go here and pick up 30 people. Like they all had their own little mini side quest to get them. Mm -hmm. Sumi yeah. Coden was a huge ass game for a PlayStation One release. Mm -hmm. 
so that's kind of what it reminded me of like you gotta yeah. go on these missions and like recruit people to your cause and then you can use them to do different things and mm-hmm. hmm. so I found it this game is called Dead Cells and it's gimmick is oh, very yeah, similar yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. where it's like if you died you similar came to back Death Loop, not yeah you, you, you came back to life and the map was kind of different and you, mm-hmm. you but you kept okay. like your experience and weapons and stuff so you like okay died and kept that experience and like used what you just learned to get further in that run so do you think this kind of thing like death loop and then the like permadeath but not really permadeath from watchdogs and dead cells uh like shit i just forgot the name the 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 from software games uh devils dead souls Dog, Dead Souls. Or, no, that's uh, a nice Dark, Dark Souls. Dark Souls. And, Dark Souls. Uh, yeah. Demon, Demon Souls, Souls and, and uh, Bloodborne. Bloodborne. Yeah, yeah. they've kind of got the similar. <laughs> we suck. <laughs> similar. <laughs> well, we got to bring up Nine Inch Nails, so that's yeah. positive. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems like kind of a similar, like it's all kind of riffing on that idea of like you die and you lose some progress, but not all of it, but yeah. you're not really dead and you. Mm-hmm. So. I think it's a, I think it's a good way of like. I don't think there are a lot of games anymore that truly punish players for dying. Um, and yeah. while I, I am very for the fact that some games, like, you should just be able to enjoy, and, like, I don't necessarily want every game to punish me for dying. I mean, I play all my games on easy. <laughs> yeah, like, like I think it's an interesting concept. I, I, I feel like there's a middle, middle ground, though, where it becomes, mm-hmm. oh, hey, this is kind of neat. I really don't want to die. Yeah. Like, and encouraging yeah. the player to put in, like, optimal effort right. to... I've died five times. I can't get past this pot now. Like, right. I don't want to play this game anymore. Yeah. I always go back and, like, try to play uh, Super Mario 3 just for, like, the nostalgia <laughs> factor. I'm like, I yeah. love this game. Like, oh, my God, it's amazing. Yeah. But if you, like, lose, like, if you lose all your lives, that's it. You start the game over. Yeah. Like, yeah. So it it's like, oh, you either beat this in one go. Yeah. Yeah. Or, like, any game before save files were popularized. It's like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. you know. If you die, that sucks. Like, yeah. you're kind of either going to start over or win. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we talked about Watch Dogs. So the, they also announced that Mythic Quest show, a sitcom about game developers, yeah. which I don't know. I missed out I on thought it would be interesting to talk about because... 75% of us have game design degrees, but if you guys didn't see it, then... Did it look accurate? I didn't. I mean, I've never been part of a professional game studio, but it looked. Oh, uh, was it, it about looked, like AAA development? <clears throat> no. What, so, like, like the setup it looked like was like, there's a game studio, and like one of the guys invented some super hot MMORPG. Okay. And now he like thinks he's hot shit, and uh-huh. he's like the the whole advertisement for their new game mm-hmm. was about him, not the game. Like uh, a new game uh, from so and so, and so and so did this, and it's like. Mm, it yeah, sounds kind of like, like, is it like a comedy? It's a comedy, yeah. It sounds like Silicon Valley except for games. Yeah. Exactly. Silicon Valley yeah. is great, so yeah, yeah. Like I, I could felt, see it being entertaining. It could be, but it feels like, and I guess, I mean, this is probably true of a lot of stories, but like it's just got the framework of a standard sitcom. Yeah. yeah. It was just like, now they're game developers instead of working at a coffee shop or yeah. instead of yeah. being roommates. Yeah. I wonder I wonder how much of a, of a crowd is going to be drawn to that. Like, obviously, like, yeah. anyone that's in the, the field or that saw it might be like, oh, that's kind of interesting. But, like, how many, like, normal people, like, quote-unquote normal people, <laughs> are going to be like, oh, yeah, I want to watch a, a fucking sitcom about game developers. Like, you know? I think that's the that's the thing about trying to make sitcoms about, like, niche subcultures. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> a lot of people really like Big Bang Theory. Yeah. A lot of people who consider, the, consider themselves nerds hate it. Yeah. So, well, it's it's like IT crowd, like it's it's yeah. very like dry humor, yeah, and it's like very interesting. But if someone's not like super into like that kind of humor or those kind of jokes, you're just like, huh? Yeah, like what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think if you make it right for the niche crowd, it's not yeah. going to draw a big audience. Mm-hmm. But if you make it good for everybody, like obviously the niche crowd is going to be like, no, I hate it. Yeah. Thanks, I hate it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you play steamy steamy nut. Huh? Team it up with Stadia. I thought that was interesting. You play Plus, so like Ubisoft's thing. Mm-hmm. They're, I guess, they're teaming up with Stadia somehow to release particular games only on Stadia. Oh, so okay. like, if you have a You Play mm-hmm. Plus account, you can also access them through Stadia. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. People are uh, really trying to stick it to Steam. In Apparently, my opinion, like yeah. they're like, ah ha ha, Steam! Yeah. Look what we're doing now. <laughs> 
Well, and the other thing, actually, we skipped this. Speaking of that, like um, Orion, mm-hmm. which is shit, is that EA's? I think it's EA's. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, Origin. No, it's uh, Orion. Orion. It's. Mm-hmm. They might have had Orion. I think it's Who something they that? just announced, and it basically oh, no. like <laughs> it. Set, they're trying to be a direct competitor for no, not the Lockheed Orion. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, they know. Oh, but no, it's Bethesda's new thing. Uh, it's the space game, right? No, no, no. That's no, a... I think it's a delivery service. Or not oh. delivery, like a, it, it, I think they're trying to be Orion streaming. Oh, it's, they're okay, like, okay. I think they're trying to compete with Google Stadia. Okay. Because they're like, you can stream, like, subscribe to us, and you can stream 1440p games at like 400 megabits a second mm-hmm. to any device. Mm-hmm. Bethesda has like, wow. burned me so yeah. much. Like, <laughs> I, I am very appreciative of them like trying these things, but I feel like specifically right now the gaming market is in such a way that like you fuck up like Ooh, more yeah. than once, you don't get another chance. And all the stuff that happened with Fallout seventy six with like the bags and the pre orders uh-huh. and then immediately dropping price, like yep. I think they have to be really careful because yeah. it's it's the same with like with like um Bioware and what happened with Andromeda. Yeah. Like I don't remember. There was something that happened kind of before that. Um, mm. And so they were already kind well, of like... Well, everyone hated the ending of Aspect 3. Yeah. Um, and, and they came out with the Citadel DLC, which was yeah. kind of, for a lot of people, kind of redeeming in, in you know, somewhat of the way, you know. Yeah. Um, but then, like, Andromeda came out and it, like, bombed. And so then it was like okay, well, what's next to kind of redeem yourselves? Right. And then, you know, Anthem came out, and I don't really hear much of anything <laughs> about Anthem. No. Um, so I can't say whether it really, like, failed Anthem, or succeeded. Anthem wasn't Bethesda, though, was it? No, it was Bioware. I'm going on a rant. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but that, like, concept where, like, so now we had Andromeda, and now we have Anthem. Yeah. And you're just now on this kind of, like, shit list yeah. with people, specifically people that probably don't play video games very seriously and very casually because they don't see that background information hmm. that, like, gives them the knowledge, like, oh, hey, Andromeda wasn't that great because, like, the um, Canadian studio, like, the Montreal yeah. one worked on it, and they'd never worked on a full-length game. Right. Like, someone that just plays video games isn't going to know that. And, like, granted, probably somebody that just kind of casually <laughs> plays... The pizza is here. Okay. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> Bethesda's uh, space RPG is called Starfield. Oh, okay. And the Obsidian one that looks awesome is uh-huh. called The Outer Worlds. Yeah. The Outer Worlds looks really cool. I was confusing the two because I forgot Bethesda oh. was making one because yeah. their trailer wasn't a gameplay trailer. It was just, look at our logo. Yeah. And... Well, and I want, I want Bethesda games to be fun, and I want them to be, like, good games. I want so games. badly for them to be fun again. Yeah. Like, like, like uh, Skyrim was just, like, dumb, stupid fun. It yeah. was, like, the story sucks like who cares about the story in skyrim yeah. Like, yeah i never played morrowind or obsidian so the overarching story of all of them yeah flew over my head but it's yeah. like if it's fun and it you like you go through these awesome dungeons and yeah like have a sword in one hand and a magic in the other then mm-hmm. who cares but they've they've hurt me so bad and i'm just like <laughs> bethesda you have this one chance yeah don't fuck it up <laughs> And on that thought, the pizza's here, so this is a good time to take a break. So, okay, we are back from pizza and refreshing our drinks. Uh, Where did we leave off? Uh, You started talking about Stadia. Stadia, yeah. Stadia stuff, yeah. And Abby was saying how much she hated Bethesda. Bethesda, yeah. Well, you know, because we were playing, talking about Orion. Right. Yeah. Um, And I was just like, "You done me dirty, Mm. Bethesda. (laughs) We we can't be friends anymore if Orion just like absolutely tanks it." The funny part is. one of the guys who's our project leader is at work. Mm-hmm. His brother works for Bethesda. Okay. He used to work for Mythic, and then Mythic got bought by Bethesda. So now he Bethesda. He worked on Fallout seventy six. Oh. Did yeah. he? Did he also work on the new? Uh, oh crap! What's it called? The battle royale mode for seventy six that they just announced. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> but it was funny because he came up to me one day. He's like, "Oh yeah," he's like, "Have you guys played Fallout seventy six? I'm like, "No, I haven't." But I've been hearing really awful things about it. He's like, what? "Oh." I was just curious because, like, Matt worked on it, so I was just You're wondering like, what oh. people think about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> hmm. I, I think, though, 
anyone that works on a game like knows if it's gonna be oh, bad yeah. oh, from yeah. the get-go yeah. like i'm sure his brother was like halfway through development like oh god no, this is not well, and his brother's had like well. a 25 year career in games so yeah, it's not so like he, he's he gonna lose everything because of this it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, i'll go back to writing Baldur's gate missions <laughs> um yeah so the other thing resident Evil, like like six Resident Evil games are coming to the Switch. Yeah. Or no, three are already on the Switch, and then like three more are yeah, coming to three it. Three more, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> Resident gonna... Evil, Resident Evil Zero, Resident Evil Four, uh-huh. Resident Evil Five. I can't read my own handwriting. And Resident Evil Six are all coming to the Switch. Are Are any of them like remaster, or are they all just like the just originals? Okay. Well, I think they're ports of. <clears throat> whatever remasters they've done. Okay. Like, the graphics for Resident Evil aren't, like, the PS1 graphics. They're, yeah. like, the GameCube graphics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Which oh. makes sense, because you go into the Switch. Yeah. Mm. So, that... I thought that's really cool. It kind of makes yeah. me want to get a Switch now. Because mm. I never had one before. I thought the ad was a little... The ad was funny. Very cheesy. It was like, super, These two like... people playing the, playing Resident Evil in an abandoned house. Yeah. yeah. And then the girl's like, like oh my god! To, uh, it might be cool to play in a place like this. And then it's like this like scary abandoned house yeah. that's very well furnished and then they she's like hug it a abandoned house pillow and i'm like don't hug that that's yeah. dirty like. yeah <laughs> i mean i to be fair like setting your surroundings to match the game you're playing is kind of cool i yeah. went in college I once i had a laptop and i went i went into the woods at night like surrounding my college campus to play silent hill okay. uh-huh. like at this like oh, okay so <laughs> when i was in college mm-hmm. <clears throat> me and my roommate like there was woods all around us, so me and some friends like went into the woods and like built a shelter out of like twigs, twigs, okay. twigs, and like branches and mm-hmm. ropes and stuff. Because we were all like, "Yeah, we're like survivor men," kind of. We're like <laughs> dumb eighteen-year-olds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then, so like, yeah, I went out there one night at like midnight and played to play Silent Hill, and then okay. the battery in my laptop died, so I got to play it for like ten minutes. <laughs> and I was like, Fuck, "Now I got to walk back to the dorms." Mm-hmm. But I think it's really interesting. Um, Kind of like going back to what we were talking about. You know the Steam game that I told you guys about that like... Hmm? Yeah. yeah. Steam game? That, that game is on the Switch. Um, oh. So I think it's on really interesting. Nintendo system? Yes. So I, I don't know what changes like, they've made. Like with a physical It's in the marketplace. Like on the actual store? It's in the store. Oh. So it would be interesting. It's very interesting. And I don't know what changes they made to make it either So do we want to mention or, the name of the game? Uh, yeah, sure. So okay. the... A full disclosure, I haven't played this game. I know people that have, but I just know about the joke because it's come up on my Steam and someone explained it to me. Um, the game is called Nekopara. Oh, you're talking um, about oh. the cat. Yes. I was thought, okay. yes. I thought I was you were talking about, about the, game the other we'll one. About no, later. I was talking okay. about Nekopara, yeah. Okay, Okay. that um, makes way more sense than <laughs> yeah. the other one. Yes, I was like, much more sense. allowing. Yeah, I was like, wow. I was this. kind of like, wow. No, Better get I mean, it while it's still there, man. <laughs> but if, if, if anybody knows what Nekopara is, it's not exactly appropriate either. Um, it, it's interesting to me because like Nintendo has always been painted as this very like kid friendly yeah game system and like obviously they've always had kind of a, some adult themes in their games but to have like Resident Evil on their consoles is very interesting and and maybe that's why the the ad itself was kind of more childlike and kind of cheesy uh, okay but I wonder how that's gonna kind of continue like um, I know Dead by Daylight is coming to the Switch so like yeah. how they're going to kind of reconcile this um, persona as like a child's console as they continue to integrate these kind of more grown up games well it's actually t- it just kind of reminded me um, Manhunt 2 and Mad World both came out for the uh, for the Wii yeah which like Mad World okay that's kind of goofy silly horror mm-hmm. or, like blood and guts but like Manhunt 2 was really hardcore fucked up yeah. and then like they integrated it with the Wii motion controls which is like this is a Nintendo console yeah that was that was a surprise move mm-hmm. but I don't remember any other well then I guess two Resident Evil Zero and Resident Evil also came out for the GameCube yeah mm-hmm. so I guess they're trying to I guess maybe for the past 15 years, they've been trying yeah. to dip their toes sort of into more grown-up games, well, but not and, and maybe still just, being a kid's console. Yeah, maybe to appeal to those people that like yeah. have played them since they were kids. Oh, okay. It would be what I would think, is like yeah. they're, they're trying to have that appeal. That and like most of these games that are coming out are obviously like not Nintendo's IPs. Yeah. M- right. Like all of Nintendo's IPs are very kid-friendly. Unless that's, I'm, I'm not thinking okay, of one, but so maybe that's games are, yeah. maybe that's kind of one of those things is is they're you know integrating these these kind of more grown up games for people that you know have grown up with their systems. Okay, kind of like we were talking last week, like scary stories to tell in the dark is for people who grew up with the books, yeah, not for kids today. Mm-hmm. Hmm. 
I think, yeah, they're trying, like, they'll adhere to their set of values in their own games. And yeah. They'll be like, we're going to create games with, like, family style gameplay in mind. Mm. And we want this to be something anyone can play. Because they're very, like, we want anyone to be able to play our games. Yeah. They're, they're very strongly for um, making games that anyone can enjoy, which mm. I'm down with. Yeah. But I think they're also trying to just expand their platform so yeah. that more developers can develop for it. And there's more ways to play other third-party games. So, like, The Witcher 3 was announced for Switch. That's right. And that's not something you would typically think would be on a Nintendo console. Well, and Doom came out for Switch. Yeah, and Doom yeah. came out. It was, out like, a bunch title, wasn't it, or uh, something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, Wolfenstein came out for yeah. Switch. Yeah. Like, yeah. all the Bethesda games came out on Switch, too. And you would never really think of that pre, you know... Switch era. Yeah. Did they modify these games at all? No, they were. So they're gonna they have the sex scene in Witcher Three. Yeah, probably. Yeah, so I don't know. It'll be really mm. low, like graphic fidelity. Now, <laughs> yeah. they, Suddenly the trailer the was really just drops. Yeah, yeah, the graphics in the trailer were really dropped down because obviously the yeah. tech in the Switch is very super limited. Um, but no it'll probably be in there. 1080 RTX in there. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> there. Hmm. Uh, let's see, Resident Evil on Switch, mm-hmm. uh, Poke Plus device. Mm-hmm. That was something I didn't know existed. It's it seems like it's just the other thing, the wristwatch thing they have. Yeah, it's just yeah. now in ball in a ball form. Yeah, yeah. it was it, really cool in the Let's Go like Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee games because yeah. they yeah. used it to integrate the uh, Pokemon Go. I was gonna say it looks like I hadn't heard of it before, but it looked like it was designed for Pokemon Go. Yeah, the oh, whole yeah. like the whole purpose of those games was like a a proof of concept of a main series game on the Switch, and B okay. to try and draw in all the people that liked the Pokemon IP because of Pokemon Go. Right, like they became fans because of the mobile game, and then they're like, mm-hmm. here, okay, play like one of the actual real games mm-hmm. to lure your, you in. We're gonna take out the traditional like capture battle style right. and we're gonna add in like the you know movement throw thing using this controller oh okay and so it's really cool that I think it worked for the most part and now they're just trying to find more ways to let people who paid 40 bucks well, for yeah. this thing yeah. use yeah. it well that's the thing about like especially controllers like you pay 40 50 bucks and I'm like cool I've got two games I can use it for yeah neat like yeah. I have, like the PS4 the, the aim controller mm-hmm. I really want one of those it seems really cool but there's literally like one game that requires it, as far as I know of. I, I think Farpoint is the only game that requires it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, uh, don't really want to pay eighty bucks and then buy Farpoint yeah. for one game. Mm-hmm. So, well, this was the other one. Actually, it reminds me of the uh, the bongos from Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I guess you could actually use those in other games too. Well, it was, it was just, just a like a controller basic input triggers. device. Yeah, it yeah. was the same button, so you could use it What's, for like. Guitar Hero, Overwatch, whatever you felt like. That that dude that uses them to like, he had the video of him like using them to beat a boss in Dark Souls. He like beat oh, the entire yeah. game yeah, with those things. The Donkey like, Kong Congos. That's Congos. freaking insane. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know why you. You must I have a lot even of time. Beat a ladder in that game, like I, I, with a controller, yeah, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Astro Chain. I have that in my notebook. And I think that was like a JRPG that looked interesting. Okay. I don't know. Oh, is Astral Train the one about the Earth gets um, invaded by these aliens and the like police forces around the world develop the technology to like capture them and use them against themselves? So you get like this partner yeah. alien thing. The gameplay looks really fun. Like you Astral- get to you get to like capture these aliens and then you use them in these really big like graphically over the top uh, combos. Well, it's from the same. It's from Platinum Games. Okay. So like Bayonetta, Metal Gear Revengeance. Oh yeah. Okay. So be... yeah, the gameplay is going to be like you just smack them around a whole bunch. And, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. An upcoming video game developed by Platinum Games. Wow, the Wikipedia page is awful. Uh, oh. Astral Chain brings an interdimensional invasion to Switch on the 30th of August from Nintendo okay. Life. Yeah. So yeah, it's exactly what what Cole said. Nice. I thought it looked really fun. I think that's kind of a good. Mm-hmm. I think it fits the Switch. Yeah, I think well. it'll be fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, Spyro is coming to Switch. Are you mm-hmm. guys? Sean's pr- old enough. I don't, are you guys old enough to remember the first Spyro? Yeah, yeah I played them okay, on the yeah. PlayStation too. Yeah. Yeah, I that I loved that game when I was a kid. So I'm excited for like the whole trilogy to come to Switch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm, did anyone else see anything about Stranger Things three? 
I did yeah. not know. So Wait, there's a Stranger... Did you say Stranger Th Things 3 game? Yeah. Like, um... Do you remember the Stranger Things game, like, for the Roku? Yes. <laughs> it looked like that. Uh -huh. Okay. But I would hope with more responsive controls, because it's not a Roku, it's an actual Switch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. But yeah, like, it looked like it was, like, a top-down hmm. adventure okay. slash puzzle game. They're really, like, uh kind of branching out they had like an ice cream flavor at like yeah. baskin robbins or something yeah i mean i think it's popular enough that like they can afford to like do. do all those things but some of them i'm just like out of all the things that you could have branched out to or we're doing this one yeah like <laughs> yeah i guess ice cream is like an easy thing to do because yeah. it doesn't really have to have anything to do with it. like i guess waffles maybe maybe it yeah. tastes like waffles yeah but um like, th there's Batman and Wonder Woman ice cream. Yeah. That has nothing to do with them other than, like, they're on the box. Yeah. Oh. Like, I think it would have been cool if they had done something, like, more arcade -y. Like, even, like, an arcade box. Because, like, like games are such a big thing to the characters. And, like, the yeah. arcade plays such, like, an integral role in their Especially kind of, like... in the in the 80s. Arcades yeah. were huge. Yeah, that it would, it would be cool if maybe they, like, had gone that way. I mean, I'm sure the, the video game is going to be neat anyway. But, it, like thinking of like the enter the gungeon game yeah. like it would have been cool if they went somewhere in that direction just because it fits like the overall mm. aesthetic of the the show you they know? should have given it to devolver and let them distribute it with their arcade cabinet right yeah, yeah. i would have bought the shit out i'm still yeah. thinking of buying the shit i know out right it, so like I, I ruined my house for it but yeah. i want it yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh yeah fandom.com says the game uses a 16-bit art style and is played in an overhead view similar to its previous entry Unlike the previous entry, the game supports local co-op and solo gameplay. Okay. So that should be cool. It yeah. includes 12 characters, including 11, Mike, Dustin, Lucas, Will, Hopper, Joyce, Jonathan, Steve, and Billy. Okay. So yeah, that should be a fun little diversion until Stranger Things... When is Stranger Things 3 coming out? Next month? July, yeah. Cause okay. I, I think it's supposed to be the 4th of July. Stuff. We July. talked about this yeah. last week. Yeah. I, I always question myself, though, because like... It, it makes sense because like their last season came out around Halloween. I think the first season came out around right. Halloween. But yeah. I'm just like, Fourth of July. Fourth, yeah. Like, what? yeah. Like, I guess it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the other big announcement, the Final Fantasy VII remake. Am I the only one excited for it? I'll try it. I'm excited because I never got to play like, fi well, I never have oh, played yeah. Final Fantasy before. Yeah. And so I know the gameplay is going to be completely different, which I'm at least happy for because oh my god, I've played a ton of like you know party take your turn combat kind of games. And yeah, you can only play so many before they get kind of the same. But mm -hmm. I just realized you were like a year old when Final Fantasy VII came out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so oh like my god. I'm excited to be able to jump into this like super Final Fantasy story and yeah. actually yeah. get to play it for the first time. <clears throat> it looks really good. Like the graphics look really pretty, and they've updated the combat to be more like like the original. I don't know how many like old school RPGs you guys have played, mm -hmm. but like turn based battle systems and yeah. all that. Um, it looks like they've updated it to be more like like a combination of like modern Fallout Vats, and then also like a little bit of Parasite Eve and a little okay. bit of Final Fantasy XV. Mm -hmm. So like you're running around and you can like attack the enemy. Like in real time, mm -hmm. but then when you build up your like, I think they call, I think they called it the limit meter or mm -hmm. the break meter, yeah. Yeah. which seems like it serves a different purpose than it did in the original game. Beside the point, mm -hmm. um, when you build that up, you can go into like super slow mo, and that's when okay. you can like choose commands to like use magic and use items and heal and mm -hmm. kind of queue mm -hmm. up commands to, um, mm -hmm. and it's then it, then it kind of turns into the more like traditional active time battle system. Okay. Yeah. So I'm. I don't, it'll be interesting. And they say two, though. So it's coming on two Blu-ray discs, mm -hmm. Hmm. which is insane. Yeah. Because that's a lot of content. Yeah. And they also say it'll expand the story of Midgar, which to me says there's new story content. Hmm. So it's not just like, oh, I know the whole story. I can just skip it. Yeah. If they're adding new story content, I think that's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, is anyone else... Interest, is anyone else interested in Life is Strange 2? I didn't even no. know what it was about until I looked it up, <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. I, I'm interested in, in those games, and I think the in, art style is really cool. I think the narrative is really cool. Mm. I am such a, like, I, I hate the chapter release system. Oh, okay. It, like, saps my interest for a game so much. Like, 
Like, I just want to, like, obviously for most games at this point in my life, I'm not going to sit down and be able to finish them in one sitting. Yeah. But if I want to sit down and play a game for five hours, I want to play the game for five hours and not have to wait for, like, the next, like... Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, see, that's interesting, because, like, I'm at a point in my life yeah. where I guess I'm, I'm, like, I've probably got, like, a good decade on you. Um... But, like, I don't ever really have time to, like, sit down and play a game for five hours. Yeah. So I love a game where, like, I can sit down for an hour and a half and get to an end. Not yeah. necessarily the end of the game, but, like, a good point. Like, to, to me, it's like, yeah, like reading a, one chapter in a book. Yeah. yeah. Which is, this is a weird thought, but why I fucking hate Anne Rice. Because okay. her books don't have chapters. Yeah. So there's no, like, good <laughs> stop. It's like, I've read 30 or 40 pages. Yeah. And it just keeps going. Yeah. There's no break point. Like, yeah. I just have to put it down in the middle of a thought. Mm -hmm. And so, to me, like, breaking it up into chapters. And I love the serialization of games these days. Yeah. yeah. I guess that kind of goes back to that conversation we had, though, about, how, like, how I feel about comic books. Like, I really think oh, yeah. comic books are cool and, like, their concept is cool. But there's just something to me, like, I would rather read, like, a 300-page book that if I okay. wanted to, I could just, like, blow through it in the day and, like, the story is done. And yeah. I've, like, experienced it as much as I'm going to experience it. There's just not, like, enough meat for me in a comic book, especially if it's, like, a currently, like, running comic book. Okay. And I don't want to have to, like, wait for the story. Yeah, that's, so. that's why I almost exclusively wait until the trades come out or it's a finished series or something because I yeah. hate having to wait for new issues to come out. Yeah. So I wonder... Well, like, Sean, you've been quiet. How do you... <laughs> Need your opinion of someone who's closer to my age. <laughs> of what? Like serialization or oh, binging? I, after uh, I got burned by Half-Life. Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, not doing that fair. anymore. Yeah. But um, no, it's kind of interesting because like, I, <clears throat> I wonder if that has to do with like Netflix and other services allowing you to just kind of like binge whole things at once. Yeah. Because mm. I was just thinking the other day how I kind of missed like miniseries mm -hmm. and waiting on like oh, the next part of this miniseries is this Sunday and, like, yeah. waiting the whole week and being, like, talking about it. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday at 8 o'clock, I'm going to watch, like, part two of Storm of the Century. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of miss that, which I think is why I got back into comics and why I don't wait for the trades. Yeah. Because I'm like, cool. You like Second knowing. Sunday of every Wednesday is yeah. Batman Day, you know? Yeah. So it gives you something to look forward to. Second yeah. Sunday of every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's okay. Second Wednesday of every <laughs> month. <laughs> you know what I meant. Yeah. <clears throat> I yeah. didn't even notice <laughs> well, and, and, like, at the end of the day with, like, TV and stuff like that, the the kind of direct access to the entire, like, story of something like they do with Netflix is nice. Yeah. Um, with, like, TV series, I don't mind as much waiting. Um, I feel like for me, like, books and video games are, are a little bit different for me than, than TV series. And maybe it's because okay. I, don't, I don't watch TV series as often anymore. But, like... Most TV series last for, like, a really long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and even, like, mini series, usually those are kind of accompanied with the fact that they're these really long episodes. Um, yeah. So I think for me, like, with, with, like, books and video games, they're kind of this contained experience. And even a little bit less in video games compared to books, but there is a certain level of your own imagination that comes into them. Okay. Um, and, like, you're kind of in, like, specifically with video games, you're, like, an active participator in a video game. Mm -hmm. um, and even technically in a way, like, obviously in a book or a movie, but de definitely different than in a video game. Um, and so in those instances, like, I want to be able to, like, actively participate as long as possible. And so that, that kind of idea of, like, I, I think it's a cool thing, like, chapters, but it feels very kind of, like, I paid for this thing, and it's, like, an experience that I'm enjoying, and it's very jarring and kind of, like, I'm not interested anymore to be taken out of that experience okay. because it's in a chapter format. And so it's, like, well, I want to, like... Like, this story is, like, I'm into it. I'm, like, I'm immersed in it. Oh, the chapter's over. I guess I have to wait, and then I have to kind of, like, re-immerse myself. Okay. And I know that life is strange in a lot of those other, like, chapter style. Well, I was um, just thinking, like, Kentucky Route Zero. Yeah. Is the one I was thinking of, which I'm super, like, like, like Sean said about, like, no Half-Life 3. Like, yeah. there's no Kentucky Route Zero Chapter 5. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. Um, like... 
it just breaks my immersion. I know that they like tend to do those, oh, previously on, but like I've lost my commitment to any of okay. the like characters and the experiences because I've had to wait for it to like continue. It's like, oh, I'm really nervous about blah, 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 but I have to wait, you know, until the new game comes out or the new chapter comes out. Right. So <laughs> when it comes to like TV shows, I usually find myself just dropping the show for a while. Yeah. And then like a year or two later when I decide to redo it, I just start from the beginning again so I can yeah. build up that like that relationship with the show or whatever and like start caring about the characters and the story again before mm -hmm. I move on from where I dropped off. Yeah. That's happened way too many times for me to think <laughs> that it's just like with that a flute. one show yeah. or something. So so they said Final Fantasy 7 is also going to be released in chapters. Yeah. <clears throat> and obviously like the episodic route is kind of it seems to be coming back with like yeah. Life is Strange and Kentucky Route Zero. Mm -hmm. And I think I think Octopath Traveler did it too. I think so. Didn't yeah. they? Um do you th what do you guys think about like is that gonna kind of be a fad that dies or is that well, gonna be like I things so. coming out you hope so i, I hope kind so. of am in the same boat where i would hope so for as much hate as it got i played undertale and i loved it to death like yeah. it was a super good yeah. game mm -hmm. um and the sequel is coming out mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's coming out in installments mm -hmm. like yeah. chapter one chapter two and yeah uh, the developer Toby Fox released the first chapter for free. Yeah, like which was an awesome surprise for me because I hadn't heard anything about the development of this game. I don't know if he like was keeping it secret or I was just out of the loop. <laughs> but I just saw it on Twitter one night and played it that night. Yeah. It was awesome. It was amazing. And but it was only like an hour long or something yeah. because it's chapter one, chapter two. Yeah, and I value the like fact that he's a solo dev who gets some help with certain assets along the way um and he writes all the music for those games by himself oh, and mm -hmm. it's like really really good music yeah and he and then the second one he's adding more and more tracks he's just okay. like compounding the work so i get when you're in a situation like a solo dev or a solo author or something you mm -hmm. like can do the installments so that you can yeah. have more content and do better yeah. in these small bursts but it is hard to, at least for me, it's a bit harder to consume the media when okay. I'm breaking it up and doing it in short bursts, whether I'm like losing interest or yeah. forgetting what the story is or just not being able to keep track of when stuff's releasing so yeah. I yeah. don't buy something that I should. Or... I wonder if it's going to kind of go in cycles, like the way books did, like <clears throat> like centuries ago, books would come out in serials. Yeah. yeah. Like I think Sherlock Holmes came out in like a chapter at a time mm -hmm. and then we kind of got into like holy shit like 900 page novels like yeah. you know Count of Monte Cristo and then even like but then back in the 90s like The Green Mile came out a chapter at a time mm -hmm. like I remember my dad reading The Green Mile in the 90s and he would like buy a chapter at a time from the grocery store for like two bucks mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and then um and then now again I think with like Kindle and stuff a lot of ebooks are coming out like a chapter, chapter at a time you pay like 99 cents for a chapter mm -hmm. yeah. and i remember reading uh wool by um oh uh by hugh howie and that came out like a chapter at a time they were like mm -hmm. i think maybe 150 page chapter mm -hmm. chapters but you know so i, I feel wonder like if it kind of goes in cycles i feel like if it has a very uh consistent release date like okay yeah. this this yeah. like season yeah. or the this like uh set interval of chapters or whatever is starting it'll come out like once a week or once a month it's a lot easier yeah like once a week is yeah it's a lot easier when you know what to look for and when that's true yeah but games don't quite have that luxury it's yeah. like game yeah. game development is such once a every fluid yeah. Yeah, yeah game development is such like a fluid changing uh industry where something like one specific part of the game can take a long time but the rest of it can take you know, like a month. Right. And so any game that's based on installments, unless they make the whole game all at once and mm -hmm. then just release it in bits, yeah. it's going to have this problem of, well, this will come out hopefully in three months, but it could yeah. change. Like, if we really don't go under. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and that's, so that's my thing too, is so like the Left 4 Dead game, or not the Left 4 Dead, is it Left 4? No, it's uh, Walking Dead, the Walking Dead game. Yeah. Installments, yeah. and then yeah. Telltale went under. And yeah. like, yeah. thankfully another studio picked it up, but like, 
people would have never had the end of that game yeah. if, you know, no one had picked it up. And so I think that's part of it, too. And, like, when I was thinking about, like, what Cole said is, like, even with the TV series, it's like, okay, I know every week on Tuesday I get to yeah. see the next episode. Yeah. Whereas with video games, it's like, oh, you said it was supposed to come out a month from now, but, oh, there was, mm-hmm. a, there was a delay. And I totally yeah. respect that, like, delays happen and that you need the time to make the best game possible and that, like, they shouldn't be overworked. But, like, it's, it's also, like if I knew when it was coming and it yep. was consistently coming then, then I would be like more like, oh yeah, chapter games. These are fun. Yeah. Yeah. There were my, like, there's a comic book I've been reading. Um, I think it's <clears throat> farm, it's, it's farm hand or paper girls. One of them, but they used to put at the end of every issue, they'd be like, here's a schedule for the next four issues. Mm-hmm. Issue six is coming out in May, seven in June, eight in August. Cause I need to take a break. And yep. like, so that was cool. Like you knew when they were coming out instead of like, other series where it's like cool issue six was four years ago yeah oh. hey brian wood when can we get issue seven you know Woo. yeah <laughs> yeah um but you mentioned overwork mm-hmm. which i wanted to bring up an article i sent to you all today yeah about nintendo saying they're pushing animal crossing oh yeah uh like quite a ways out like eight months out yeah wasn't it? Mm-hmm. well i don't remember what the original release date is but it's pushed the new one's the march 2020 now. yeah 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 which like everything's coming out march 2020 um yeah and so and, yeah. I, I remember telling you that i for one was entirely about it like i yeah. was yeah completely on board with the decision and yeah well the, alongside if no one's if anyone hasn't read the article nintendo said they're pushing it because they want to help their employees maintain a good work-life balance. Yeah. And they don't want to buy into the, like, culture of, of crunch yeah. like so many and, studios do. And it's very... I find it super impressive because yeah. af- right after that announcement, like in the Nintendo Direct, the uh, executive, Doug Bowser from Nintendo of America, and the executive in Japan both came out and said, Hey, we're doing this for, like, our employees. Yeah. We're super sorry, but, like, yep. the game will be better for it yeah. and we won't be you know harming people's yeah, lives yeah and i was super impressed because not only is that like an is crunch an industry standard in gaming already yep. in japan it's like the japanese culture is always like work 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 and i yeah. feel like that can compound on top of the game stuff yeah mm-hmm. um so i was just super impressed with how they decided to handle like we know animal crossing has been a long time coming and a lot of people are really looking forward to it especially on the switch it but you really gotta fun. you gotta wait just a tiny bit longer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love how the guy announced the delay too. He wasn't just <clears throat> he wasn't just like oh yeah well it's coming later. He's like I hate to ask this, but if you could just give us a little bit more time to work on it, we would really appreciate it. Yeah, like that's yeah. just like a nice polite way to be like sorry our game's delayed. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And but it also looks really fun. It does. It's look just really a good. lot less aggressive. Like, hey, it's coming later. We know you're still gonna buy it. It's just like, hey, please yeah. just be a little more patient. Even though they should know that people that are still gonna buy it. Like, yeah. Anyone right now that's complaining about the delay is absolutely gonna buy it. Like as soon as the pre-orders yeah. open yeah. up, like, mm-hmm. they'll yeah. complain all they want, but they're still gonna get it the instant it comes out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Final Fantasy. Is anyone else interested in Final Fantasy VIII the remaster? No. Again, I've never. <laughs> Which is okay. the one? It's probably not any of the ones you mentioned. Which is the one with is it Yuna and Pain? Final and Fantasy X. Ten. Ten. Okay, that's yeah. the only. Well, no, no. Final... Pain is in Ten Two. Okay, it's Ten Two then. Where ten they two have they the open it with the singing. They're like a dance troupe now yes. for some reason. Yes. That's <laughs> the only one I played. One. That's the only oh one I have played, and I will remember it vividly because like. <laughs> Uh, I played it with my older sister and my cousin, and we each like picked a character that we wanted to be, and we were like reading their lines, and I was that edgy little shithead as a kid, and so mine was pain, and she says like fuck in one of them, <laughs> so and so like, I was like, I, well no, like I was talking and I didn't realize she said, and I said it, and they're like, ooh, we're gonna tell on you, and I sobbed like a like a baby because I was a baby, and I was like, I'm gonna get in trouble because I said fuck, but like she said it, so I was gonna say it. Well, I did the same thing in elementary school, except it was with Sonic. We we would essentially just role play which yeah. Sonic character we were. Okay. Yeah. And I was always fucking pissed because my best friend <laughs> always was like, I'm Sonic. You, you don't get to. Well, he was Sonic. My other friend was like, oh, fine, I'm Shadow. I'm like, well, fuck, who's left? Silver hadn't come out yet. Yeah. So there wasn't the trio of like three cool characters. It was like, <laughs> shit, I got to be like Metal Sonic. And I was always no. pissed off. It was, a, it was a shitty little pissed off kid <laughs> running around and with my arms behind me like a, oh God. 
They get an asshole like, fine, I'm Metal Sonic. Uh, Dickheads. Uh, all right, well, <clears throat> so we've got another subject, not E3, coming up next. So let's take a break before we dive into Modern Warfare 1 reboot. Reboot, New? yeah. Modern Warfare. Right. Fair. So we'll be back after a short break to minutes. refill our drinks. Three, two, one. Ooh, that, that was good. Perfect. <laughs> that was solid. Yeah. All right. So, uh, other big news recently is the Modern Warfare reboot, reboot reimagining. Yeah. It's so it's it's called Call of Duty. Is it Call of Duty Modern Warfare or just Modern Warfare? I think it's just Modern Warfare. Okay. I and would be surprised if they weren't attaching the Call of Duty name to yeah. it. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So, yeah, so I guess it's, like, kind of a reboot slash reimagining of the original Call of Duty 4 mm-hmm. with, like, the same characters and a similar storyline, but, like, updated to be in modern day. Mm-hmm. Does anyone know if it has the same voice actors? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Cole needs better mic technique. I told you, last time we did this, I, as it went on, I just kept leaning back yeah. away from my mic. Just stick your should mic put... in your mouth forehead. <laughs> I should... Is it mouth forehead? No, I should... no. So I'm sorry, did I forehead, miss a reference? Yeah. Forehead is is like it's not I'm not calling him stupid. That's not <laughs> Okay. But like it's like you it's like I what you say to stupid. someone like usually at a company is you telling them to do something that's physically impossible to do. Like if I was like, Oh my arm hurts, one of my friends would be like, Just rip your arm off, forehead. Like it's it's like oh, okay. like, oh, oh I like I it. can't believe you couldn't think of this, like kind okay. of thing, but you don't <laughs> I've actually never need heard it. That. Yeah. Next um, next time I'll just bring like a neck brace with a work. mic stand on it and just like, <laughs> yeah. keep it on me at all times. Well, yeah. but Cole will have a lavalier. Yeah. The only <laughs> one with a lav mic. Yeah. Yeah. Um anyways, yeah, okay. So <laughs> the new Modern Warfare game is like a Reimagining of Call of Duty 4, blah, 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 but updated for 2019, I guess. Kind of interesting. I don't know. I'm kind of burnt out on, like, military shooters. Yeah. Yeah. The real interesting thing that I want to talk about, though, <clears throat> is they brought this up on What's Good Games, is how the graphics are super realistic, and they're trying to make it, like, edgier and less cartoony, I guess. Mm-hmm. And they said, like, I, and I saw the trailer that was supposedly actual gameplay, and, like, when you go into Night Vision, it looks... Like they say, it looks like you're watching a live leak video from like a soldier's body cam. Oh, and it's really? kind of weird. And they said, especially in certain levels where you're sub- taking out terrorists, but they're just dressed like normal people. They're not cartoonish villains. And it's kind of weird in the sense of like, kill these people that look just like normal people, but mm-hmm. it's cool because they're terrorists. So it's okay. Yeah. And I don't know it's kind of weird it brought up a whole discussion about like where's the line in video games what kind of stories are video games allowed to tell Mm -hmm. Um, this also kind of leaning into that is like a lot of the stories that they decided to tell and one of the kind of selling points that they have is this idea that they're pulling these like headlines from like right now yes like history so they're like relevant to like actual things that happen like i think they talked about there's like a bombing in in like um, France or something is like one of okay. the the subject matters they co- cover and like obviously that that like bomb threats as well as bombings yeah. have been like things that have been happening a lot in Europe right now yeah um, and so I think that that also adds this like extra layer to it that they're like you know using events that are real life and in, in a lot of cases real people are still you know experiencing the effects from and they're gamifying them yeah <clears throat> yeah because these events aren't like it's not like a world war ii game where it happened the at, like at this point 70 years ago yeah. yeah and like a lot of the people that were actually there are gone now mm-hmm. it's like mm, this happened last year some people yeah. are this is yeah. still fresh and happening today to some people yeah, yeah. <clears throat> what kind of we're making money off of it do you guys remember with entertainment when they were going to come out with that battle for fallujah game yeah and like no. that was so what interesting thing about that was a lot of people protested against it so it was eventually canceled but from what i read the game was pitched by people who were actually there in the battle of fallujah mm-hmm. and they're like we want to tell our story about what happened and like they picked the company to do it and like we think you can do it respectfully yeah so is there like a can you tell these kind of stories respectfully in a video game I think it kind of comes down to perspective. Like in that case, it makes a the context is a little more forgiving because it's like they were there. It's yeah. in part their story, right? 
but you're still only getting their perspective of it. Like, hmm. whatever the game would have shown could have been potentially harmful to other people on, like, the flip side of the coin. Okay. And it could have shown... I don't know, something awful that would have happened to people that weren't these guys that right. were deciding to make this game. Hmm. Um, so I can't say whether or not I know that was like a good call. It was probably a safe call to be like, you know yeah. what, better not. But in this case, like clearly the people who are experiencing this kind of stuff aren't the ones making the call to make this game. Mm -hmm. Like, America, for as many tragedies as we have, we don't have the kind of, like, bombings that Europe has had lately that mm -hmm. they are basing a level of this game off of. And we're American devs making this game. Yeah. yeah. So you get kind of a bias of... It's easy for us to take a step back and just look at the media and be like, let's make this game about current events that to update so our franchise. Yeah, yeah, let's let's update this franchise and make it more modern because you know it's modern warfare. Yeah. But to us it is just like, hey, we're updating it to the real world, but it's still happening to other right. people. <clears throat> so yeah, it might just be our perspective is fundamentally tainted um just cuz it's not necessarily our experiences. Well, and I think there's a little like you said mechanical separation bias yeah. where like cuz if it does follow the original I don't think there were there weren't any missions in the original that took place in America. Modern Warfare Two had like the one or two missions, but the original Modern Warfare was all in the Middle East. And um, were there any in Europe even in modern in the original Modern Warfare? Yeah, I believe it was all. Middle East. I think it was all yeah. Middle East. Yeah. Modern Warfare Two was the airport. Modern Russian Warfare Two had no Russian. Yeah. Yeah. The and even then in two like all the missions were very like. Hollywood kind of like military yeah. missions. They were very yeah. broad in general. Like they were very well stuff that could have been happening. Yeah. And probably was happening at the time the movie released. Like accuracy wise or just like are broad these the, yeah. yeah, very yeah. broad, but it was also very like how dramatic can we make this? Yeah. yeah. Um and it wasn't something that I would say was directly pulled from maybe one or two very real events. Yeah. Yeah. Like the speculation on this like European bombing level or whatever. Yeah. The new one. Yeah. Well, and I think the difference too, like Modern Warfare 2 and 3 kind of aside from no Russian was I think more about like spectacle. Like in Modern yeah. Warfare 3 when like the, uh, the Eiffel Tower came down and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And it feels like that's kind of a more like oh, wow, this is like an action movie, like Independence Day yeah, or yeah. Transformers. But it seems like with Modern Warfare, they're trying to go... the Okay, with the new Modern Warfare, <laughs> they're trying to go like grittier and more unsettling. Yeah. yeah. Which it, it, it really depends on how they handle it, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Like if they go... I don't know. It, it, I, I, really go on, think, yeah. I really think the take on like the purpose of this game is to make you uncomfortable is really interesting. Yeah. And I think there's a lot that could be explored with that. But also at the same time, choosing a subject that could potentially be at the expense of other people yeah. and their experiences. I don't know if this is something you could explore and even is possible without doing that. Yeah. I, I just don't know if it would be possible to make a game that was like, we're making something that we want to make you uncomfortable, the player. We want to make the yeah. player uncomfortable and want to like put the controller down and think about their actions in the game. I think a lot of people have tried to do that, but it's been like not quite there. And if Modern Warfare is really doing it in a way that makes you like really uncomfortable, hmm. I don't know if it's possible to do that without it being at the expense of other people that might have really experience something yeah. like that my my concern and i think it's very interesting this evolution of games into this concept of they're not just for fun anymore mm -hmm. um one one it's a two-part thing the first thing is like a lot of indie games have gotten away with that concept because they don't have these like large followings or they have the the kind of fan base that has the time to kind of dissect them and digest them in a way that you understand, hey, this wasn't just supposed to be for fun. This was supposed to leave a message. Yeah. So I feel like coming from a AAA company, especially with games that have 
intentionally been very like Hollywood grandstandy and more of like adventure-y to suddenly have this game that, you know, whether intentionally or not is going away from this concept of video games are more than just fun. They're supposed to make you uncomfortable. I wonder how many people that play that franchise, and I'm not trying to stereotype people that play the Call of Duty games, but I'm I'm not sure how many of them are gonna get it and how many of them are just gonna be like, ooh, hyper realistic, I get to murder these people that look like yeah. like everyday people. Like, yeah, yeah, you have that pretense of, oh, these are terrorists, but you've also now put these terrorists terrorists in plain clothes. And I mean realistically, real life terrorists, they don't yeah. look, you know, like some caricature of people. They're not wearing a sign that yeah. says like yeah. terrorist on but, it. But like where is that that line that like so yeah, you're killing terrorists, but like, hey, murder, especially with this high level of realism where it feels like a, a live leak video, is still not like okay. And yeah. like this whole like, oh, this is about this bombing in Europe, like this is a terrible tragedy kind of thing, and not just like, ooh, this is the the proverbial like woman in the refrigerator to get my character to yeah. go, you know, balls wild and like right. kill all these people kind of thing. Yeah. So. I think it too depends, <clears throat> like you said, on how they handle it. Like, it, like if they turn it, if it just becomes like a really shiny version of like hatred or postal two, yeah. that's gonna be awful. But if they, if somehow they can do it, like stories untold or like spec ops the line, like you yeah. know, like wow, well, I kind of feel bad for doing this. Maybe I should think about this. That could be interesting. But I think, like you said, it's hard for it to, for them to do that to come from a studio and a publisher known for their like just hero fantasy yeah. over the top games like maybe they should have made like a middle ground kind of thing well i was gonna say like um a different imprint to use a term from comic books mm -hmm. for this particular game mm -hmm. like the way like there's dc but there's also vertigo yeah like yeah. maybe you have a different imprint for ea games that's not mm -hmm. just to kind of like separate it from the I'm never one really for the argument of like games can blur the line between real life and your game life. Like mm -hmm. whenever the argument of games cause violence come up, I'm usually like staunchly against that opinion. Like yeah. mm -hmm. not just from my personal experiences with games, but just like the studies that have been done with them and yeah. Yeah. the ability for people to play these mainline games without it having a drastic uptick in uh, terrible events. Yeah. So I'm not so much worried about that, but I still think even while I was playing Modern Warfare 2, I clearly knew like it was a game. Yeah. Like I, mm -hmm. it, when I was talking about how it felt like a very Hollywood kind of interpretation of war, a very like hero yeah. fantasy, as yeah. you said, kind of interpretation, mm -hmm. I, I very much felt that and knew it was a game. And so if that's what they're actively trying to get rid of in this new one i'm i wouldn't say that i'm concerned that it would blur the line between real life and like what your actions in real life and right and wrong and that kind of stuff but i do think the content could hit a lot harder yeah like you would still know you're playing a game but it would just be <clears throat> much more blurred on what the intent of the game is or right. what it means for you as a player it, it i feel like it would be it has the potential to be a lot more difficult to be like oh i'm playing a game and haha i'm the hero of this game yeah. even though it's based on quote quote real events which is like is that a good thing or a, a bad again thing? like they mentioned on what's good games like it could if it um exposes to people to like oh like no this is what war is actually like it's yeah. not yeah. just like i'm a cool guy shooting bad guys it's like mm, no it's actually kind of fucked terrible. up and disturbing and mm -hmm. terrible you know and then because you then you do have like um you can have like you know old like john wayne westerns that yeah. are like hero fantasies and blah 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 and then you can also have though like johnny got his gun yeah. which is a horribly depressing disturbing uh, uh war story so like I think I think video games are at the point where they were mature enough to like yeah. we can have both stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I agree it's kind of weird to have both stories coming from one studio just, and one franchise. It's just it has the added aspect of interaction that the move like movies yeah. and books never really have. Yeah. 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 Well, so then I think that's kind of what they're trying to explore is how can we take games inherent 
one up on other media forms of yeah. interaction mm -hmm. and use that to the same effect as these movies or other forms of media where you really take a step back and look at it. If they do it successfully, like I said earlier, I think it'll be a really interesting, it has a lot of potential to be an interesting new take on the medium. Yeah. Uh, interesting new look on what you can do narratively and with your interaction yeah. to the end experience of a game. But I also see it just working again, like backwards. Uh, really, if not just for the game, but for a select number of players just really having an awful experience with it. Yeah. I like to think, though, with as much work as it looks like they've put in on it, they've like it they've me. really done the homework and okay. put in all of the... Just with how well-developed the game looks and with... Um, how much care they have for that specific franchise in Call of Duty. I think, I, I like right now, I'd like to be able to think that they know what they're doing and they'll release something that would be more uh, <clears throat> just like revolutionary for their brand than it would be as like a whole of redefining what the industry is. Hmm. And and I would agree with you, like the, the kind of idea like video games don't make people violent. Um, I think for me, it's like that whole concept of, of having this like hyper realistic violence in these video games, especially from like a triple A company. It, it and video games are art, and it's a little bit different because like people are actively participating it in a way that most people aren't participating in art. Yeah, and it's something that you see in in cases where people do like you know regular like two D three D art, like performative art, where where there are active participators, where like things can go kind of bad but like so we we show like these uh, i know another example that they use is like there are these two children and they just like watch their parents get murdered in front of them yeah and the the um the people that were talking weren't sure if that's like something you actively play through or if it's something that's like a cut scene so for me it's like we show these really violent like things and i know that in in art it is kind of the the tendency to go over the line before you find it like so we we are like, okay, it's okay to depict these things and people can become desensitized to, to them. And especially because it's a triple A game, it gives signals to other like, hey, it's okay if I put this stuff in my video game now. Hmm. And like, how much further can I push this visual violence that you're actively having people participate in? Yeah. Um, and like, where, when is the line drawn and who, who gets to decide like, okay, this is, this is grotesque. This is too much. Like, yeah. you know, and yeah. I think especially like w with the fact that it's about current events, I think that's going to like escalate the, the like visceralness of the events because like, it's so fresh in a lot of people's minds. I like the idea of that line being up to the player. Like I like the idea okay. of it being like, Hey, this is what this experience is. It's up to you whether or not you do it. Mm -hmm. But that only works if they're, like, crystal clear on what the experience is going to yeah. be. Yeah, I've never been for, re never really been for banning things. Yeah. yeah. But I've always been for very, very, very clear content descriptors. Like, yeah. l let it be up to the player if they yeah. want to do. And I, I think I can lean in the direction of them doing that. Because if y'all remember in Modern Warfare 2, they had that specific warning. At yeah. The, yeah. As soon as you at loaded the up the game, the they're like... Hey, there's a level in this game that is and really even, even at the beginning of the level. They said you can yeah, skip they, this. Yeah, they if did you want it twice, to. and there was yeah. always a setting in the menu that yeah. was like you want to turn this level off and skip it. Um, I always thought that was really at the time that I played it, I was confused by it. But yeah. looking back, I always thought that was really respectful and a good move. Like, hey, this might be potentially harmful for you. We're letting you know now, like. You can skip this. Just choose not to play it. Well, so that brings to mind an interesting quote from actually actually the guy who developed Spec Ops the Line. He was talking about that level, and he said, like, whether it's just for shock value or if it's meaningful, and he brought up an interesting idea of, like, if it's actually meaningful, it shouldn't be skippable. And if it's skippable, then it kind of means it's just there for shock value, and, and if it's just there for shock value, it shouldn't be there at all. Yeah. So... Like, I don't know. What do you I, guys... I think that's a good stance to take on it. But I I always think there's, like, kind of a gray area. Like, I can agree with what he's saying, yeah. for sure. Like, from a developer, from an artist's standpoint, if they think that content they've created is important to the story, it has narrative value and mm -hmm. is necessary for the full story, 
don't make it skippable. Like if you make it skippable, right. you're admitting that this portion doesn't have the value to be like in the narrative. It's just right. there for shock value. But I also think it's possible to have something that adds to the narrative while also being for shock value, like using the shock value for oh, yeah. the purpose of expanding on the narrative. Yeah. But also having it be a self-contained narrative if you choose to skip it. Like the story would okay. make sense if you yeah. chose to skip that level. It just was, in my opinion, it would be less impactful. Well, I think that's <clears throat> like, was it so kind of to harp on that a little bit? Was it totally necessary for that to be interactive or could, would it be, would it serve the narrative just as well and the emotional part of it just as well if you were like, if they just told you about it in a cutscene like they did in, you know, so many of the other parts of the story? Because well, like, there's not really... Which one are you talking about? The Modern Warfare? Thing? Modern, Modern Warfare, Warfare no two. Russian. You actually yeah. didn't have to shoot anyone. Yeah, that's you could true. Just go that's true. You could get through choice. it without shooting anyone. That is I true. Think, but I they never go back to of... it. You switch characters so often, there's yeah. no consequence to doing it or not, which like, like I'm going to harp on Spec Ops the line because I love that game. And like in that game, you do awful things and the game responds. And yeah. it's like, why are you doing this? What are you doing? They never got that far in Modern Warfare 2. I think that's kind of just on that point of the narrative still worked if you didn't do it, but wasn't as good. Like in the cutscene okay. right after that level, they just basically covered it again with narration. Right. So it's like, you hear about it, but I think the interaction is what delivered that shock value for the purpose of the narrative. Sure. It was like, you could watch it, and sure, there'd be shock value, but you'd get a greater shock value for, oh, hey, you, player, you did this. Yeah. Like, okay. you either made the decision to do it, or you didn't shoot anyone, and then that changes kind of you as the player's experience. Hmm. Um, okay. Yeah. But the fact that it was interactive just like compounds the shock value of like you made the choice to do this or not do this and right. that kind of shapes your experience with the narrative uh at least a little bit and in my opinion it was a little bit that mattered and was a good little bit it added to the story for me at least but okay. i definitely didn't think it was like a you have to do this or you're missing out on the story of modern warfare 2 I feel like I, I really like the the quote that you had that like if it was like meaningful it shouldn't be skippable, and although like I, I agree that like shock value can be used for the story, I think like the concept of not making something skippable is like I think an interesting one that that could be kind of like delved into. But I think for me like not necessarily in a video game, but having like been like forced to participate in something that I didn't know the like ramifications of until it was already happening, mm -hmm. like people when they play video games are being willing participants in this because they're in in one way or another they're trusting the developer for this experience so although i don't necessarily think that every developer needs to go as far as like oh you can skip this i think there should always be that like warning in place yeah because like you should never have to go into a situation that is like that in my opinion without ha like knowing what you're going into and right. having that option yeah. as a willing participant to not participate if you don't want to so that kind of brings to mind, so like we've been talking a lot about mostly whole games that are like that, like Modern Warfare, supposedly, and right up like Hatred and Postal 2, but also um, just small parts of games, like the no Russian level, but like, so to kind of go on that, like for me, I stopped playing GTA 5 because the torture scene was like, I'm really uncomfortable with this, and it just soured the whole game for me. So like, what... <clears throat> and that was not skippable at all. Like, yeah. that was a main mission oh, no, you I had remember. to do. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, like, oh. mm, I did not like that. So, oh, like, I just, grind. I returned the like game. It was a challenge or anything. It, it was yeah. just like, like it a, pushed the button. There. It, it was, was like yeah. injected yeah. into the story, too. Yeah. That, that's a case where I felt like I, I might just be biased because I think the GTA story is just like an extra layer added onto the top of what I makes mean, that, that game good. Like, yeah. I never thought the story was the main draw or was even relative really that great but so i can't quite say the same thing i was saying about modern warfare 2 where it's like oh this is necessary for the story because i didn't think the story was that good true so you take that into my consideration of but for me that felt much more like shock value and yeah hollywood action movie scene than it was hey we're gonna compound you as the player's feelings into the narrative to mm. make it mean more that to right. me, that scene to me was just more like haha like torture scene here we go 
So is that different then from like when you're either like in Modern Warfare the reboot where you're either shooting terrorists who look like normal people or GTA 5 where you're torturing a, actually I don't remember did he end up being an innocent I don't remember I didn't he was extracting information it. that was a dual yeah. character thing okay. he needed to find out who you needed to kill and he was relaying information to the guy who was going to do killing okay that's right but <laughs> so is that different than like something like Manhunt where you're <laughs> ostensibly <laughs> like you're hunting different uh, and like other like murderers and killing them in awful ways, but they're pretty cartoonish. But it's still pretty, it's still pretty grisly and violent. Like I remember, they were like, mm-hmm. you could kill them in Manhunt with like a, a plastic bag or like Garrett wire. So is that, is that a different kind of line than like Modern Warfare is trying to set, think, or games like Spec Ops or Hatred? I think the only reason people are starting a discussion with Modern Warfare is because they've brought up this big initiative of theirs to assert realism because like extraordinary violence in games isn't anything new and there's never really been a i mean there's been discussions on violence in games but we've never really analyzed like you know the killing floor or something or like the old modern or the old like uh street fighters or whatever where there's blood like mortal kombat on the game or mortal kombat like mortal kombat people have had issues with and there's been discussions but it's never been like do we need to reevaluate the medium because you can tear a guy's spine out? Right. And I feel like now, maybe that's just like my age talking because I could very that very well could have happened and I wouldn't know. But now it seems like it's kind of a more profound discussion of how is this going to affect people, not in the same way that I've always heard violence discussions in games. Where right. it's like, this is bad for like society and it's going to make people act out in real life this seems much more of a discussion of like how are people going to be like mentally affected by this game <clears throat> i and, have no sorry go on. and it's always felt like and for me at least i think the difference is they've made this initiative of oh we're going to make this as realistic as possible mm-hmm. and make it modern like events that are still happening and i think just the idea of you know we're trying to stay away from the game cartoonish violence or something that lets you know you're in a game and it's game violence and go for as much like real violence as possible that's causing the discussion i do think it's interesting that the discussion this time around seems to be less about like it's just hyper violent and is that okay or not and more about like is this in service of the narrative or is it just exploitation and I yeah. think that really speaks to like how the medium has grown as well, as a medium. Yeah. People seem a lot more forgiving of violence for the sake of violence in games, just because yeah. I think for the most part it's been accepted that like, hey, you can have violence in games without it being a problem. Yeah. yeah. But this time it's much more like, hey, who is this? Who is the violence in this game gonna affect? Like, is it gonna affect the player, or is it gonna affect like the people that the game is depicting or right it's much less just hey violence bad yeah it's it will be interesting to see when the whole game comes out what it's yeah actually I'm like and what other people goes. yeah have to say about it and uh when's it due out i don't remember actually <laughs> i don't i don't know like do they have time probably to next year it? who knows oh, okay. or this year when was the last time a modern warfare game they came come out? out like every october november okay so probably october yeah, yeah. Uh, so, they don't have much time. They can cut. Yeah, they'll just make the whole game skippable. Yeah, you buy a Blu-ray. And I'm fine like, with that. I mean, skip this whole game. It's just Whatever the whole game, game. Yeah. enjoy it. You know, like, I think there should yeah. be a, a box that says God mode on every game. It's like, yeah, if that's how they want to play it, let them play it. Yeah, yeah. it comes out October 25th. Oh, okay, October. Oh, that's not that yeah. far. No, it's I would not. have thought it would have come out after E3. I was like, every game is coming out 2020. Year, yeah. <laughs> I know in March, yeah. So every time I see a game that has a release date of this year, I get excited. I'm like, oh, that's like a month away. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So I think that's everything uh, I want to talk about. Any last things you guys want to throw in? No, that's nope. solid. We're good. Cool. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming by again for another podcast. Yeah. And thank you everyone who listened. Uh, if you enjoyed it consider donating to any of the charities in the description hopefully we'll have your ears again next week thanks everyone and good night good night good night